Hey, good afternoon. It's Valerie. Um, didn't expect to be coming back to you so soon, but um, I've decided that I really enjoy making these videos. Not so much seeing me on the camera, but um, I don't mind it for a short little bit. And let's face it, when we are making the soap, that's really what you're concerned with. Um, you don't need to see that I might be soaping in my pajamas or that my hair's a wreck and it's not great. Or I tend to be a little self-conscious. Um, I don't, you know, don't have the greatest hair. I keep it short. You know, I have a cowlick here, blah, blah, blah. But that's not why you're here. You're not here to watch me. You're watch he here to watch my hands and what I'm doing with them. So, I may do some introductions, but you won't see me for the whole thing. But anyway, hi. Um, today, what I'm doing, periodically, I, I have several soap making books. And periodically, I get them out and I start looking for different, you know, inspirations for different soaps. Um, we can all get complacent and um, we... We shouldn't do that um, because that's, if we do, then that's a lot of times when the passion starts to, to fade. Um, on the flip side of that, <clears throat> I rarely ever use a formula out of a book. I did in the past when I first started soap making because I didn't take the time to understand soap calc and um, now I love it. Um, but anyway... I often find recipes in books or off the internet to be too drying for my taste. So what I might do is um, I tend to look through the books more for coloring ideas, um, design ideas. And so today, <clears throat> actually yesterday, I took out my one of my books and um, there's a whole section in the back on ways to color your soap naturally. And I am really interested in that now. So what I've decided is I have some geranium essential oil. I, I love geraniums, but I'm not a huge fan of the essential oil. Um, not by itself anyway. So I went on the EO calculator and found a blend. Um, I'm not using all of the oils that they suggested, but I did use four of them and it, this is geranium and patchouli black pepper and grapefruit and it's I thought that doesn't sound very good but it smells really good really fresh a little florally but yet a little earthy between the black pepper and the patchouli it just gives it some depth um, I'm very happy with it. I made this this morning. I mixed it up, I don't know, about 8 o'clock. And it is now 3.30 in the afternoon. So, I'm um, going to be using that. And I've decided to try adding some rose clay to my lye solution, to my lye water. Um, I'm going to use one teaspoon per pound of oil. It'll be a two pound batch because I don't want a deep, dark rose color. But what I want to do to get a contrast is I've had some matter root infusing for several months. And I thought what I would do is after the cook, I would separate off maybe a half a cup to a cup and darken what this brings with a little bit of the matter root to see if I could get a contrasting deeper color. That's what I'm going to try. Can't promise that it's going to work. But, um, and if this works, then I may do several more. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat has gotten dry this afternoon. But, there's even a section in here about adding matter root to your lye solution, to, to your water um, and lye. 
that would be powder, I'm sure, in powder form. But I am a fan of Matter Root. I love it. And I like the speckles. Um, I'll probably strain some of it. But, um, you know, I don't mind a few specks. I like that. So anyway, that's what I'm going to be working on. And then she even has a section on if you add a half a teaspoon of the rose clay to your lye solution. She got a really pretty pale pink um, right here. This is two teaspoons per pound of oil. This is one per pound of oil, and this is a half per pound of oil. And you can just see the variations in there. So I'm going to work with that. And if I like it, if this works for me, then I'm going to try. I've got, you know, purple clay, um, red clay, yellow clay. I've got <clears throat> nettle powder, nettle. Oh, goodness, excuse me. Um, but anyway, just going to give you a little introduction to what I'm going to try. Um, we never know unless we try, right? Um, there's really not going to be anything spectacular, you know, about this. I just want to try it, and I thought you might want to see what happens if you've never added the clays to the last solution. I even thought about mixing up just a little bit, you know, not to put in a soap, but just to see, you know, what would happen, what the batter would, the, the water would look like. But then I thought, you know, that's kind of a waste, and you're not going to get a true um, outcome if you don't make soap with it. So, anyway, I will see you when I'm ready to make the soap. Hi, welcome back. Um, it's actually been... A whole day since I made my introductory uh, part of the video things got busy really busy yesterday and um, I didn't get my oils and additives and things measured out so and by the time you know how life goes by the time things settled down it was too late and I was afraid for mistakes um, which is difficult enough to keep my mind straight during the day, but at night I'm usually fried by the end. So, um, I am, my oils are at 156. They're on low. I'm going to cut them to off because I don't want them to get too hot. Um, if you remember correctly, I'm going to be adding rose clay to my lye solution. I opted to only do a half a teaspoon per pound of oil, and this is a two pound batch, so I have roughly one teaspoon of um, rose clay in here. Because I wanna do it lighter, because I am gonna go ahead and add matter root for contrasting color after the cook. So I thought I would start with a lighter color. So I wanted to bring you in and show you what happens with the lye solution because quite frankly it's been so long since I've done this I don't remember um, what color it or what happened when I added my lye so I'm gonna let you watch I think you can see that get my other spoon I have certain spoons that I use in my lye. And um, here we go. I have my silk in here. I thought maybe I could use this, you know, the, the rose theme for Valentine's Day. Not that I usually do a Valentine's soap, but and you can probably see that's turning a really pretty pink. I have water and aloe vera juice as my liquid. And as I said in here, I have my Tussa Silk. I'm really enjoying this Tussa Silk that Karen Boyce gifted to me kindly. 
Um, I'm sorry that you're not soaping if you're watching, Karen, but I do appreciate you giving them to me. Okay, well, that looks really pretty. And I know it's going to be lighter, you know, once I add it to my batter, but hopefully it's going to be light enough that I'm going to be able to do a contrasting swirl with the matter root. I also thought maybe what I would do, um, hang on, I want to get one more infusion and show you. I have some nettle leaf that I've been infusing, well, about four months. And I thought I would either maybe add just a little bit of that to some of the batter and add some green to it for a like a foliage effect. Or I started some spinach powder. And I thought maybe I could add a little bit of that. This is in almond oil, which would also serve if I added a teaspoon or, or two because I don't want it too dark. You know, it would help with some super fatting, which I'm doing at 2% afterwards, 5% up front. So, I don't know. I'm going to give it some thought and um, make up my mind. And hope I'm not making a mistake because I'm really happy with the way that looks. So, I will see you shortly. Well, my oils are at 168. Uh, and in my oils, I have my usual kale and clay and colloidal oatmeal. And my lye solution with my rose clay is at 178. So I'm going to go ahead and get started mixing. And as I do mix, I'm going to add about an ounce of my rice milk. So here we go. And I pour it down the shaft of the stick blender just to keep from splashing. Um, and I pour slowly. My tuss of silk is completely dissolved. I just hope this is pretty enough to do some swirling. I said this is a first in a long time and I've seen other soap makers make beautiful get beautiful colors when they use their clay in their lye solution so we're gonna see <laughs> milk, just eyeballing it. I'm using my other stick blender, my newest one. This one's so quiet. Um, I try to alternate them so I don't put so much wear and tear on just one. But I really do like this one. light trace and I'm going to go to about a medium.
my crock pot is still off and the temperature was 173. That's about a medium, but I'll go just a little more. And um, my new gloves came yesterday. I am so thrilled to have some that actually fit decent. Um, I chose purple this time. I hope it doesn't distract you from the video, but I chose purple in honor of my granddaughter, Gracie. Purple was her favorite color. So... This is just another way I can keep her soaping with me. And um, my recipe today is coconut oil free. Um, I chose, and, and some people, you know, nobody likes the same oils. I mean, but I have palm kernel and palm in this recipe but no coconut oil so um, I'm going to share the formula with you and um, if you want to use it you're more than welcome to just please don't you know use it as your own as I said I've been revamping some of my recipes and um, I have a couple that are coconut oil free. I have some that are no animal fats, but this one I, I wanted to do the palm oil. <clears throat> so my recipe today is 15% palm oil, 10% castor, 24% olive oil, 20% palm oil, 20% beef tallow, and 11% apricot kernel. And I'm super fatting up front at 5%, and then after the cook, I'm adding an additional 2% of apricot kernel. And um, if I decide to do this spinach powder, I'm trying to decide. I don't know which one I'm going to do, but... Anyway, it won't be a whole lot. It might be a couple of teaspoons to get a, a contrasting green. We'll see. I, you know what? I'm going to strike the green all together because I don't know how that's going to work with a rose-colored batter. That just might not work. I'll explore that after the cook to see what the color the batter is. Um, <clears throat> what else was I going to say? Um, I think that's all. I did cut this back to low um, because it was not gaining in temperature. It was holding steady at 173. So I did cut it back to low. And once I reach my first volcano or fold over, which, you know, ever it does, I will cut it back off and probably remove it from the cooking unit just because that's the way I do things. So um, that's all for now. I think it'll probably be another five minutes or more before this starts to, to cook. Well, it's been probably five minutes and it's really not doing anything much that I can see, but I did want to show you the pretty color. Um, it's just a really pretty light pink, um, which I think will be 
beautiful for a Valentine theme soap. Um, excuse me, let me see if this is important. Yes, I'll be back. Sorry about that interruption, but I think I've mentioned to you before that we are self-employed. Um, so some calls I just have to take. And this is starting to rise up, so I will try to remember what I was going to say to you uh, before the phone rang. Um, but I am really happy with that color, um, it being darker, I mean lighter, and which is really good, and I'm going to cut that off, you know, because I want to do a, a darker contrasting swirl. Um, I don't know if you can hear it popping and cracking, um, but it's just cooking. It's, it's not like it's going to force itself over or I would be vigorously stirring. This is coming up pretty slowly. And I'm just going to let it keep on for a few minutes or a few seconds. And I am going to go ahead and take it out of the crop, out of the heating unit. It's a little hotter today than normal. I'm surprised I have fingertips left. But I am going to go ahead and stir it down. Get rid of some of that steam. That heat. Smells good. I mean, it, it's really strange. It smells a little different to my regular soap batter. And I don't know, you know, if it's because of the oils or, or what, but um, <clears throat> anyway. I have my hot water here that I'm going to give it a little spray. What I plan to do with this, um, is I have a loaf mold in the oven, keeping it warm. Um, I plan to separate the batter off into probably just one color and um, pour in layers and then I'm going to do a chopstick swirl um, once the batter is, is all molded. Uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you. I have yesterday and yesterday morning I had seen a couple of things from Brambleberry pop up under my Facebook advertisements. And one of them, I'm sure you've probably seen it too, is for the lemon poppy seed sugar scrub. And I don't make a, a lotions and things. The only things I've really ever made is um, salt scrubs and sugar scrubs and soap. One time I did like a um, body, oh, I don't even know what you call them, lotion bar, but it was, they were in uh, solid form. But I did go ahead and make some of the, the lemon poppy seed. It smells wonderful, and it kind of smells like a poppy seed muffin. Um, I used real lemon juice and lemon essential oil. I used poppy seeds granulated sugar, vanilla extract, it, it did call for a little bit of that, and um, I used a little fractionated coconut oil, and then I added almond oil to give it some, no, this is not for your face, um, someone asked me if it was for your face, no, it's just for your body, 
Um, so I worked on that yesterday. And now I'm working on a facial cream. Not with tallow or anything. I did that once and I didn't like... I always felt like I smelled like a side of beef. Um, so, but what I am going to use is a shea butter and argon and a little castor, a little apricot kernel, some calendula olive oil, and some blueberry seed oil. Um, I've been looking a lot online, studying different ways of doing things, and I just want to make a cream um, to use on my face, and um, I want to try it, see how it works. Um, so that's what I'm working on. And um, just to give myself a little something more than, than soap. Um, I'm stirring this up. There's very little separation in it. And it actually looks like it's between a mashed potato and a Vaseline. And the color is still just gorgeous. And I'm at 208 degrees, so I'm glad I took it out. And I think I'll be ready soon to, to take a little bit out to do my zap test. You know, I'm, I'm usually pretty good at guessing as to whether or not it's done, but that's not smart um, to just guess. I always... Um, I've never used strips. I've, you know, I always do the zap test. And if I don't get zapped like a battery, <laughs> then we're good. Um, so don't ever take for granted, at least my suggestion is to never take for granted that you're done. You know, do use your strips or your zap test, whichever way you prefer to check for the lie being gone. Um, but this is... If, if it isn't done, it's it's right there. So um, I'm going to let that cool off. I'm going to go bring my hot additives that um, I've been keeping over warm on the stove over. And um, get my mold. And we will get this thing going. I am completely neutral. There was no zap. And the color is still a beautiful pink. So I'm going to add my super fat. These are my hot additives um, that I've been keeping over on the stove. And I just decided to been bringing the whole pot here to keep those longer, hot longer. Because my stove and sink and everything is on the opposite side of the room. So it just makes too much back and forth, and I don't want to leave you all hanging that long. So there was my 2% of apricot kernel oil, super fat. And I'm going to stir this around good and take my temperature. And I'm down to 194. And the next thing I'm going to add is my two tablespoons of room temperature yogurt, one tablespoon per pound of oils, and this has been out for probably a good hour, and this should hopefully start to thin things down and cool things down. And then I'll be able to get a truer color of my batter. Yep, I don't see any little yogurt pieces, which is always a good thing. I've had that happen, and it's ugly, in my opinion. Okay. 
And the next thing I'm going to add is my two ounces of rice milk that I held over from the lye liquid. And if you remember, I added about an ounce of this during um, while I was bringing it to Trace. And I do add my milks very slowly and mix thoroughly in between. I'm just so happy that I tried this and that it worked. <laughs> Hopefully the next video that I make, this light's going to be out of your way. I ordered one that go up under my cabinet right here. And hopefully that'll, you won't be able to see. You know, I, I just hate for things to, I feel like they distract you. I don't like for things to be an eyesore. But we'll see. I don't know if the one that I ordered for under the cabinet will be enough light or not, but we're going to find out. So that's all of my milk. One seventy-three. So I'm going to spray my sides down and put the lid back on and let it sit to cool down a little bit more before I add my honey. My batter has come down to about 168. So the next step is to add my honey. And this is two tablespoons. And because this is coconut oil free, um, it still had a really good bubbly number of 21, but I wanted to add some more, so um, I did the two tablespoons of honey, I did a tablespoon of aloe vera juice, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, both of which, well all three, which will help with butter, butter, sorry, um, lather, I meant to say bubbles, and they're also really good for your skin, and so is the sodium lactate. So I'm gonna put that in, and usually things, they smooth out pretty quickly. I did do this at 38% lye liquid, which is pretty typical, instead of 35, which I've been experimenting some with. But I don't know how workable this is gonna be. Um, We'll see. As long as I can get a nice, um, I, I just want to be able to get it in the molds and get a good um, chopstick swirl. And I find if it's too thin, the swirl doesn't, it's not as, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't do enough cold process to, you know, to, to really make a judgment call on that. But if you're, it doesn't have much to adhere to if it's too thin. So, um, okay. This is my hot cup of water that I'm going to pour out. And I'm going to put about a teaspoon of matter root that's been infused. And I'm not going to add too much yet because I don't know what I'm going to get. And this is my fragrance oil that has a little bit of 
kale and clay, and it's been kept hot. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to my batter, and it does have a little bit of color. And it does thicken it up some, especially the geranium. But I don't have a whole lot of that in there, so hopefully it won't get too thick. Okay. Now, I'm going to spoon out some of this beautiful pale pink batter. And I'm not going to do a lot, maybe just about a cup. And see what we get. Not much. <laughs> so I may wind up just putting it back in the pot and unless I were to take out some mix up some matter root powder well, that helped a little bit so this is about three teaspoons of matter root infused. Well, that did a little bit. Okay, I'm going to spray it down. Get my mold and we'll be ready. Okay, it's pretty thick, so I'm going to go ahead and get this first layer pulled in, poured in. And then this is pretty thick, but it did, it is a little darker. So I'm just going to spoon some of this in because it's thick. I'm going to bang it down. I know I'm in front of the camera, but I can't help it. I'm going to spoon in some more. Just doing layers. I'm going to save this off for the top. And I'm going to put the rest of it on top. This reminds me of when I was a child and my grandmother, she was a girly girl and she always kept a little soap dish full of rose colored little guest size soaps and they remind, reminds me so much of her okay now I'm going to take my chopstick see if you can see and I'm going to use the, the thicker end and I'm going to go to the bottom and go back and forth and I'm going to turn it around and go the opposite way. And that's all I'm going to do for the swirl. Like I said, don't know what I'm going to get. I'm going to bang it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to take this 
of the darker one. And put it on top. And I'm not good with top, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to spray it down because it is so thick. But I'm probably just going to do little curly cues. My hot water. And then I have another little one. Here it is. That I'm going to just do some little... Rosette. I'm kind of glad I did that. I, I went on a little further with the matter root because I did get a really pretty pink. And that's all. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I'm not good with so with tops. But and so that's my experiment today with adding clay to the lye solution for a solid color and then using infused darker colors um, for the contrast. So that's my presentation today and I'll see you in a little while when I cut it. Hi, um, I brought you back. Um, I, I was making some notes and it hit me when I was making my video that I gave you the formula wrong. Um, I told you that I used palm kernel, I mean palm oil twice. And actually what I did was, I'm, I'm going to give you the formula again because I, I told you wrong. Um, I added 15% of palm kernel oil and 20% of palm oil. I used, told you palm oil twice, but um, it's 15% palm kernel oil, 10% castor oil, 24% olive oil, 20% palm oil, 20% beef tallow, and 11% apricot kernel. So I just wanted to clarify that for you in case you were figuring it into your soap calc or something and think, you know, thought, what is this woman talking about? Um, I do get tongue twisted sometimes, get my words jumbled, so, um, which is easy to do when you're making a video and you're trying to think of what you're doing and talking and, you know, multitasking. So, um, I apologize for that. My soap is in the freezer, and I don't think it's going to take long to harden up because this is the little soap disc that I made, and it's pretty hard already. I, I thought about going over and doing a lather test, but I'll do that later. Um, <laughs> it smells, like I said, kind of like my grandmother's bathroom. Um, she, she had rose-scented soaps and they were actually in the shape of little mini roses um, in her bathroom when I was young and this does remind me of walking into her bathroom and she also had air freshener that was rose I'm, I'm sure your grandmother's did too um, but I'm real anxious to see if my granddaughter likes this because one time it's probably been a year, year and a half ago. I made some soap using geranium, and it might have been a rose fragrance oil. I don't know. But anyway, I put it in the bath, and when they were here one night, they picked it up and started to use it. <laughs> and my little granddaughter, Gracie, she was, you never had to guess what she was thinking because she always told you. She picked that soap up and she said, Ooh, Nana, 
this smells like butt cream. And I'm like, butt cream? And she said, yeah, that butt cream that mommy uses on our butts. That's what it reminds me of. And I'm, I, I almost lost it. Um, well, I probably did. But anyway, every time I smell geranium, I think about that. Um, but anyway, I just brought you back so that you could, um, that I could give you the correct formula. And I apologize for that mix up. See you soon. Hi, it's been about four hours and I am ready to cut this soap that um, I did with the lye solution with rose clay in it. And this is what it looks like out of the mold. You can see the matter root variants. So we're going to go ahead and start cutting. It's a beautiful, soft, pale pink. And you can see that swirl in there. This light is horrible. My under-the-counter light did come today. It's a better angle. It smells actually better than it did going into the soap. But I am very happy with that difference in color. It's pretty. I just don't like this lighting. I'm sorry. It's the only thing about soaping in the basement. Oh, this is a pretty one. Got a nice swirl on that one. Well, that doesn't help either, does it? And again, I made that edit in the video because I told you wrong. Um, I used palm kernel and palm oil. So I wanted to come back and tell you. Ooh, that one's pretty. I am very happy. And I will be using more clays in my lye solution. This would make a really pretty spring raspberry color. I just have better success with um, chopstick swirls than I do hanger swirls. My hanger swirls leave a lot to be desired. Another pretty one. I just wish my lighting were better, but... Okay, that is the geranium rose colored soap using rose clay in the lye solution and um, matter root after the cook um, for a variation on color. So thank you for watching and um, I hope that it showed something if you've never tried it that it it's really 
it can be done. It's nice um, for a change. So you all have a good evening. I'm getting ready to do a couple things, and it's my mom's 80th birthday, and we're all going there for dinner. So um, have a good night, and I will see you next time.